Hey everyone, it's Tyler, the Antenna Man, and today I'm going to review this one by one amplified indoor antenna. Like most cheap flat antennas on Amazon, it has a low profile design, built an amplifier, and claims a 200 mile range. How well does it work? Stay tuned to find out. If you're a cord cutter or use an antenna, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to receive a notification whenever I post a new video. Before I get into this specific antenna review, I need to explain a few things about indoor antennas in general. They typically work in fair to strong signal areas within 30 miles of the broadcast towers, depending on certain factors such as your home's building material and how many trees are around your house. Too much tree coverage will likely require an attic or outdoor antenna setup. While you always get the best reception and most channels possible with an outdoor antenna, there is one way to find out if you stand a chance to get all the major networks with an indoor antenna. On your web browser, go to rabbitears.info, click on signal search, drag and zoom the pin drop to your location, change the height above ground to 13 feet, and click on go. This will generate a reception report at your location. If you see most of the local channels with signals listed as good, there's a good chance you might be able to use an indoor antenna. Anything else that's listed as fair or poor, you will probably need an attic or outdoor setup. While you have the reception report on your screen, pay attention to the RF channel numbers in parentheses. These are the channels each TV station broadcasts on, and it's usually different than what they show on air. Any channel that's 7 through 13 highlighted in yellow is high VHF and may require a longer antenna element to be picked up, but can sometimes be picked up with a flat antenna if the signal is strong enough. So back to this antenna. It's very comparable to most other flat antennas on the market that I've tested out and don't really perform well. The design is more optimized for the UHF band, which is RF channels 14 and above. However, if VHF signals are strong enough in the market, this antenna might pick them up okay. The antenna claims a 200 mile range, which is definitely an exaggeration. TV signals tend to disappear over the horizon between 70 to 80 miles from the broadcast towers due to the curvature of the earth. So any antenna that's claiming beyond a 100 mile range is an exaggeration and in my opinion, false advertising. The mileage claim on an antenna doesn't really mean much. What truly matters is how the antenna is designed for certain TV frequencies, VHF and UHF. This antenna is a pretty basic flat indoor antenna with limited gain. It's not going to work as well as a larger antenna no matter what the mileage claim is. The coax cable on this antenna is definitely on the thin side. It's not as thin as some other antennas out there, but definitely not the best. This graphic on the product page claims that the cable is triple shielded. We'll see if this makes a difference in reception a bit later in this video. The antenna comes with an amplifier. In my experience, sometimes an amplifier will improve reception with an indoor antenna, but many times it makes reception worse. I always recommend trying an indoor antenna both with and without the amplifier connected to see what brings you better reception. With this antenna, I actually found the amplifier made reception significantly worse compared to when the antenna was connected directly to my TV. So how well does this antenna work? I tested it out in the same location with a bunch of other indoor antennas to see how it performs. If you decide to purchase this antenna, be sure to use one of my affiliate links in the pin comment below or in the description of the video to help support my YouTube channel. Here are the stations I'll be testing out with this antenna the RF channel they broadcast on, and the results of the last two antennas I tested out on the YouTube channel. There are three UHF channels and two VHF channels. The signal on WNEP, which broadcasts on UHF channel 21, was right between the last two antennas I tested out. Overall, signal level was about the same. WYOU on VHF channel 12 was lower on this antenna than the last two antennas I tested out, but it was still able to be picked up reliably. WBRE on VHF channel 11 was about the same on this antenna as the Weingart flat antenna and a bit lower than the RCA antenna. WOLF, which broadcasts on UHF channel 22, 
was a tiny bit lower on this antenna than the Weingard flat antenna, but higher than the RCA antenna. This antenna actually was able to pick up the repeater of New Jersey PBS on UHF channel 27 with a lower signal level than the Weingard antenna. Most antennas aren't able to pick up this channel. Overall, the performance of this antenna was pretty good for the price. It actually picked up the VHF stations reliably compared to many other flat antennas I tested out. This sort of surprised me as most generic flat antennas I tested out performed poorly. I was really hoping to trash this antenna because of the generic 1x1 brand, but it actually performed okay. The Better Shield cable likely helped a bit. I would definitely recommend this antenna if you're on a budget and are trying to use an indoor antenna within 30 or 40 miles of the broadcast towers. After all, it worked better than most flat antennas I tested out and even comparable to the one made by Weingard that costs about twice as much. With any indoor antenna, it's critical to use some kind of signal meter as a guide to find the best location for it. Moving an antenna as low as a few feet can have a huge impact on reception, which I demonstrated in a previous video of mine. If you plan on using an indoor antenna, I'd highly recommend the Mediasonic Digital Converter Box. It has a signal mirror that comes up if you press the info button twice, which is very helpful to find the best spot for an indoor antenna. I include a link to it along with an instructional video in the description of this video. If you receive an error like this when trying to order the converter box, I also include some alternative links that should ship to your location, so don't just try the first link in the description, try other links if you receive this error. Keep in mind that all indoor antennas have their limitations depending on many factors such as your home's building material and how many trees are around your house. If you try this or another indoor antenna and are unable to pick up all of your local channels reliably, you will likely need an attic or outdoor antenna setup. Feel free to use my YouTube channel as a resource to research antennas. I also offer antenna recommendations specific to your location on my website at antennamanpa.com. I run a reception report at your exact location, take a look at the frequencies, signal strength, and tree coverage to determine what antenna would work best for you based on my experience testing out over 100 antenna models and actually installing them in four different TV markets. Thanks again for watching this YouTube video. An additional thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon or is a member of my YouTube channel. If my videos have helped you cut the cord or if you just think they're cool and would like to help support them while gaining exclusive perks, such as behind the scenes content, access to my videos ad free one day early, and direct contact with me, visit patreon.com forward slash antenna man or click the join button in this video. If you're on Facebook, you can like my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash antenna man PA. If you're not on Facebook and would like to receive email updates whenever I post new videos, feel free to sign up to my email list. I attached a link in the description of the video. Stay tuned to my YouTube channel for more cord kind of antenna related videos and have an awesome day.